Good morning. We're starting a new job here in Centerville, Freedom, somewhere in this area. We got Elvis and Zodiac today. Getting them harnessed up. Well, we've harnessed at home. We're getting them bridled up. Going to get hooked to the cart. Nick's getting the line sorted out. Why do I say out like a Canadian? Oh. It must be too close to Ellicottville. So these boys are working today and playing tomorrow. Zodiac and his little brother Ziggy are going to do a uh, wagon train over at the Caravan for Cancer tomorrow. Elvis and his heavyweight partner Andy, Andy. are going to enter in the horse pull. So both these guys will be busy. Let's put the spreaders on the inside. So, you know, we switch sides often. A lot of it's for training. And the horses respond real nicely and really learn to behave in every situation. We also switch sides For their physical health. It just kind of, you know, when they're carrying the weight of the tongue on their back or on the collar, whatever your harness setup is, it, it hangs on there a little different. Kind of like, you know, if you're carrying a, a heavy bag or a rifle or a purse or I don't know what, a horse halter on one shoulder and you get tired of it after a while, you put it on the other shoulder. That's kind of what we're doing when we switch sides with the horses and they carry a load differently. Um, kind of like rotating tires or uh, uh, flipping the bar over on your chainsaw so uh, so it wears evenly. So tomorrow both these guys will be on opposite sides. Mm -hmm. I think we better give Zodiac a haircut before the event tomorrow, Nick. Yeah. And a smack. <sighs> Got a call from a friend. We used to be real close. Got a ticket to the wind. Got a call from a friend yesterday a, uh, about overchecks. Um, he's having a little trouble with one of his colts. Not focusing, putting his head down, chewing on the neck yoke, stuff like that. And he knows I run overchecks, so he was asking. I thought overchecks were some evil torture thing. My dad hated them, so <laughs> I just didn't even consider that. Uh, you know, dad wouldn't have allowed it. <laughs> um, I don't find that to be the case at all. I, I don't find a horse. I've ran them for years when you need them. I don't find a horse in any discomfort. Um, they keep their head in a good spot and in a comfortable spot. That's how you should check them. You, you don't need to do it. You know, like you're trying to win the six horse hitch at Michigan State College or something, but. Um, so I guess maybe I ought to start by explaining what an overcheck is. Most harnesses have a check and a side check comes from the bit up through this holder and it hooks in here. An overcheck simply, instead of going up the side, comes up here and, and it goes between the ears and it really kind of stops them from putting her head down and making it hard to drive. It also keeps her head up off the collar. Um, get some from some bad habits. Kind of like an overcheck. Now I like to also get away from one. Most of the time I don't use a check on Elvis. Um, 
he holds his head perfectly and never used a check on his mother. Um, usually I start a Colton and over check and once they prove they don't need it, I take it off. I could probably take it off Zodiac anytime. Elvis is wearing a check um, simply because he eats grass when we're resting or puts his head down and, and Zodiac doesn't need anybody to beside him to distract him. So we run some over checks here and there. Actually, I'd say more often than not. Jim kind of needs an overcheck for driving. Um, you know, one that hangs on the bit does need one. Uh, you know, just low-headed. Not naturally low-headed, but, you know, lazily low-headed, maybe I'd say. Hmm. But that's about it. I, and like I said, I've never never had ill effects from an overcheck. Uh in fact, I think they're more comfortable, more refreshed at the end of the day. I, I think they get a bad name that they, they, they don't deserve. Uh, if I run an overcheck, I like to... You, you have to have something on the top of the bridle. A pocket kind of thing for the overcheck to go through so it doesn't slide around on the top of his head. I like to put something back here on the hames. Like you see both of mine go through the top hame strap and buckle in there neatly. Sometimes I'll, I'll put two snaps and a ring. Uh, you see this ring? That's what that's for. To snap those snaps into and keep it centered. Um, but you know me, I like to... <laughs> I like to do a little extra where I don't need to usually. So we're going to put the lines on the harness, about due for new lines. Well, these are great, but we need a second and third set. So measure your lines like this, you know, there you go. There's in the neighborhood of 10 inches different to a foot. That's what I like. Your inside line shorter than your outside line. Your outside line is the long one piece unit. I don't run butt, uh, butt lines that snap. I just, I don't like the feel of them. Um, I suppose you could get them snapped into something. I've heard that, but I got plenty of nonsense for my lines to get snapped into. So that's not a legitimate worry. As we said, long line, one piece line to the outside. And then the, the cross line, the short line to the inside. Now let's hook these right up and I'll show you something here. Come on around here and I'll show. So, that's okay, just, I'll get that later. Uh, when you're running spreaders, short spreader, cross to the long spreader. Mwah. Well, what I wanted to show you is I tend to run an extra piece. I put a ring right on the buckle of my line. I uh, also run a longer cross line. And what happens is when the horse does what Zodiac's doing or they split on you or something, this crotch of the line can get stuck in your hame ring or your spreader or whatever you're running and you can't get it back and you have no control. If you put this ring in here, can't go through there so that's why we do that those rings cost about a dollar a piece so it's pretty cheap insurance hi lb hand bothering you nick no just didn't you say you heard it earlier? No, oh, that was just uh, mm, something in Elvis's tail when I was putting the tail crouper on. So we'll put the other line on. I prefer leather lines. Oh my gosh.
So yes, I always do look at the horse's poop. Not because I'm a weirdo. Maybe I am a weirdo, but that's not what makes me a weirdo. I can tell a lot about their health. I, I, how hard or soft it is. If I can actually see parasites. Uh, just <laughs> something when you're a stock man, you stock person, you learn to do. Again, long, one piece line to the outside, the short piece to the inside, short spreader, long spreader bit. Zodiac's actually not even wearing his own harness. He's wearing ugly gyms. He broke a tug on his and I don't have it fixed yet. Uh, Last time he was on scale, Zodiac weighed 1840. He may have gained a little since then. Fat boy. Uh, that's a good size for a three-year-old lightweight, by the way. Um, Jim weighs 1840. So that doesn't always translate to the harness being interchangeable from one horse to the other, but it does in this case. It happens to work. Collar is a nice fit. The whole harness fits well. Um, Zodiac has his own bridle always. This is the only bridle I've ever found that's comfortable on him. Well, Nick, I guess we can show this. This is how we transport things. We put our log cart in and then the horses. Uh, I've known guys that actually travel the log cart, harness, bridle, everything hooked right up, drive the team in and go. Uh, I've never dared quite do that. But I've also never heard of an accident with that happening, but I don't want to be the first. And quite simply, this is how we strap it down back here. We just hook this. Come on back where you can show it clear. Hook this, I'll hook a choker to the center divider and hook it right into the cart. When I lift the tongue, Nick will unhook that. now. Okay, come on up. So, we back this in on oil change ramps. Maybe we should gently take it out with something similar, but generally, we just, uh, my PV handle's hitting. Oh, we bang it like that. Rough treatment. And then I leave it right there and hook the horses to it right there. We're getting down on these pony yokes. I'm kind of sick of these wooden pony yokes. I keep breaking them. I ordered a new set made of pipe yesterday. Um, Doesn't take much to break those in the woods. So if you want to know what, the, what really happened, <laughs> one set, the one broke at home actually, we were towing something and the cart tipped over and well we had a hard impact, I even hurt myself a little bit and uh, broke one the other one this dork face believe it or not went up on his hind legs and he came down on the wrong side of the pony yoke and, and broke it so hopefully you'll have better horses than zodiac what you want to buy zodiac Just 
It's not a bad spot to hook other than Elvis is going to be so distracted eating these little leaves. Well, we probably should have showed us hooking on. True says our hands were a little full and I didn't think of it. Zodiac gave us, because I thought he might, a little problem unhooking from the trailer to here. Ooh, that's why Zodiac comes to work every day, because he needs work. Uh, by the way, when he gave me a problem, these lines came all the way up through to where the outside line got wedged in here and it did not get wedged all I and it would have been a problem had uh had I didn't have that ring on there so actually a work thing let him go Nick well we're hooked up yeah the issue is Odiac <laughs> well it was part Elvis we're gonna get hard on it was okay. part Elvis and part Zodiac but the issue was Zodiac wanted to go left, and Elvis somehow thought he was going right. I didn't really have the lines gathered up. Uh, so they split a little bit, and I didn't have a neck yoke or the butt strap or anything on them yet. But no problem. It seemed like it was going to be, but it wasn't. And then, uh, you know, it's a bit of a process to get them hooked with these D-rings, and so we didn't film it. We probably should have. Grab our hard hats and we'll skid some timber. about to lift the log there. We'll do the redneck lift. Pull ahead just a couple steps. And get Zodiac on comfortable ground and where he, uh, where he can't eat leaves. Elvis doesn't bother me as much. Uh, got this hitch lifted pretty well. It's one of those deals where you cut it in the middle and, and, and haul them shorter instead of the butts to the landing like we generally cut. Uh, if you're hooking like this in the middle, especially on the end of this butt log, put your choker back a little farther. Right, Nick? Yeah. Because <laughs> if you put it right out at the end, it'll fall off with these. If you're hooking to the wrong end of the log, to the top end of the log. If you're hooking to the butt end, it's not likely to fall off because of all the root flare and swell uh, bells, If you uh, even if you trim it well. 
Um, yeah, the Elvis and Zodiac are a little cagey today. Whoa, that's good. <laughs> it's a long skid. We'll work it right out of them. Well, I came up here to make a point, Nick, and I forgot what it was. That probably is not getting better with age, is it? You notice me doing that more and more? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a day logging. We're going to try to show a few pointers on the landing here. In the Whoa. He says he doesn't need rested. Okay. out there huh yeah horses know before we do usually maybe it's a bear or a sasquatch did you bring anything if we saw a sasquatch anything to give them any slim jims or no. beer, whatever the guys like i don't know i imagine a sasquatch doesn't have a boss to answer to we could probably start drinking at eight in the morning can he probably it ain't like he's going to get in trouble with his boss. Zodiac is uh, maturing nicely. Um, that's what I was going to talk about a minute ago. He's filling out. And uh, I'll tell you what, he doesn't always, in fact, he doesn't usually there's only been a couple times where he showed pretty nice pulling. Uh, he's headstrong and he's young and his head's not in it. I'm not gonna give up on him because he has one thing that you just, it's hard to get and that's power. Uh, I notice it when I work him in the woods with Elvis. If, if he can put the squeeze on Elvis once in a while, he's got some power and, and for his size, I think he has power. now. If you could have one or the other, a horse with real power or a horse that really tries hard, but average power, I'm going to take the try every time. But um, by God, when he shows me that kind of power, we're going to we're gonna not give up on him as a competitive pulling horse and uh, kind of take it slow with him and um, see if we can get him to give it the right effort. Because uh, his teammate, his eventual teammate, Ziggy, has lots of try, uh, and I, I could tell. I could tell that horse is going to try. No idea if he's going to have power. I won't know for at least another year or two, but he has a lot of effort. Ooh, both these guys have pretty good power. Even Ugly Jim's got pretty decent power for his size. Um, I think this builds power along with good feed. Well, we'll keep on trucking and see you folks at the landing. Show you something here this is what happens when your chokers stretch sometimes they just stretch with age uh, more often they actually stretch because you hook the weaker part of the choker toward the front where it's being pulled instead of the stronger part another thing people do that stretches chokers is and I know this has happened to these and I don't like it. They'll hook one link into the end of this and that'll stretch them out. And that's what happens or they come unhooked when they're not supposed to. Uh, try to use your chokers the way they were intended. You know, that's what grab hooks are for. Whoa, whoa. Or 
if you have to you could do the old blogger trick of running a chain through there running it around and there you go you got two chokers hooked together that's the right way to do it not like that try that behind the skitter and you're not going to end up very well um, and do it long enough behind horses you're going to end up with this bullshit like we have uh oh i said a naughty word Nick. i could start watching that a little better huh yeah gas that's why i was doing that i'll tell you something else nick what i don't think these new oregon chains out of the box are as sharp as they used to be hmm. it's always been you should take a swipe off the teeth and swipe off the rakers but it seems to be even worse now <laughs> Talk about a landing. I'll uh, turn these horses around. Turn around. That's a good start. Good thing you need. Okay. You're not a good singer. I'm a better singer than you. It's impossible for you to be a better singer than me. That's a pretty low bar. I think I'm a better singer. Whoa, if I do the voice for you. I am a better singer. <laughs> dream on, dream on. Dream until your dream comes true. Do, 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 do. That's a lot of doing my doo doo, wasn't it? Yep. You're going to set a landing yet. First advice I'd give you is to not let pit squeak on your landing. Invisible friends and distractions like that cause accidents. Whatever, dude, you're an accident waiting to happen. Next thing, set it up so a log buyer can scale the logs and the truck can get to them easily. So what I'm gonna try to do on this landing today, is uh, put them in here on each side of the driveway perpendicular to the driveway. That way a truck can reach them and they can still reach this second log. A truck can reach them and a buyer can still scale them. And it'll be nice and neat. The other option is, is to just pull them up here and, and cut them up and roll them each way. But that's not as neat and it's not, it doesn't take any more time to do it this way. So this is how we're going to do it. Well, finally ready for hitch number two, huh, Nick? Yep. Can I get some paint? Hop on, I'll tell you about that. We gotta get some paint to mark some boundary lines, which isn't a big deal because we're gonna cut both pieces of timber, but we gotta know what's what still. So. Let me just give you folks a little advice on boundary lines. Most of them make sense. Most of the time there's an old fence line or a creek or, you know, a hedgerow in a field, or you'll see an old stone, uh, stone wall or something like that. Um, another thing that's a good indicator of a boundary line, tree stands. Neighbors always put tree stands on a boundary line and shoot deer off the other neighbor. Ooh. Or just look for a general change in the timber. Um, you know, if all of a sudden you go into a piece of nice big timber and your piece has junky timber, I'd question that. 
or if you leave your piece and all of a sudden you get a bunch of brushy stuff, you know, question that. Um, the Onyx is a pretty accurate app. Um, I'm sure there's others. That's one I'm familiar with. It uh, it goes off the, the tax maps, and that's fairly accurate. I mean, pretty close. Um, best thing is, don't question it. I'll tell you what not to go by posted sign. Or the landowner's word, even no matter how honest he is. He, a lot of times landowners just don't know where the property line is. When in doubt, hire a surveyor to guarantee the lines. It's not that expensive if you don't get it recorded. Or when in doubt, just don't cut it. Or if you got lots of work, move on to the next piece or something like that. But don't get yourself in a property line dispute. Here's the best place, if you, especially if you buy your timber outright. Buy both pieces. <laughs> I had to do that once. I had a really weird property line. Now, I say property lines make sense. Not as much as they used to. Back when it was farmers and farms, and this was divided up, you know, for agriculture purposes around here where I live, uh, property lines made a ton of sense. And these newer real estate agents and people that move in and subdivide and all that nonsense uh, have made it to where the lines don't make a lot of sense anymore. As Not as much as they used to, anyway. Um, but yeah, one time I had a piece, nice big, two pieces of timber, square. And the line in the middle made no sense. It had to be some stupid real estate agent, and there's plenty of them. There's also plenty of good ones, but uh, divided it right in some odd pattern instead of in a square line running east and west. You divided it ooh, into some odd pattern. And um, I couldn't figure out that line for the life of me. And this was years ago, long before Onyx or smartphones or anything. Wasn't big enough to hire a surveyor. And the answer was real simple. I bought both pieces of timber. So it didn't matter where the line was. I owned the rights on both pieces of timber and we skidded them out. And that only works if you're buying it outright. That doesn't work on a percentage. Well, we'll get some paint and head back, huh, Nick? Yep. September 27th through 29th at the Orange County Farmers Museum in Montgomery, New York is going to be the Draft Animal Powered Network Field Days, DAPNET. It's their annual field days. It's a weekend long and Friday. It's a educational seminar for everything draft animal related. Horses, oxen, probably even mules. Uh, lots of good classes, lots of good teachers, uh, forestry, farm work, training, harnessing, everything you might want to learn. It's a it's a great place to go, and we're going to be there with the team and doing some field work and some forestry. And uh, check out their website, dapnet.com, or their Facebook page for more information. Thank you. how to put some water bars in this road, Nick. Whoever yeah. did that did a good job. So, like I said, September 27th, which is a Friday, 28th, and part of the 29th is going to be the DAPNET Field Days out there in Montgomery, New York, Orange County, at the Orange County uh, Farmers Museum. Uh, like I said, it's an educational uh, conference for uh, anything draft animal related, horses, oxen, forestry, logging, training, better harnessing, better yoking, all that stuff. Uh, I haven't been yet, but I'm learning about it and I'm 
going to be there. We're going to be teaching. <laughs> and hopefully this colt will be just as silly there as he is here so you all can see it and laugh at him uh, if I decide to take him. Um, Going to have a lot of good teachers there. Tom Jenkins, Ivy Pegleri, Don Hughes, Jim Gordon, um, there's, there's a lot of folks I don't know as well, um, that'll be teaching, um, a lot of good opportunities, a lot of good places to learn, uh, sounds like a good event, um, we're gonna be logging with lots of different types of equipment, we're gonna use this cart, we're going to use grabs, tongs, uh, of course, you know, the standard choker setup like we use. Uh, scoots, we're going to use scoots. We're going to have oxen and horses there. Um, field work, I'm sure, will be some dragging, disking, lots of plowing, probably some mowing because there is a seminar on rebuilding a mower. Uh, there will be training seminars. Uh, just a educational weekend. Uh, sounds like a, it's going to be a good event. Uh, so yeah, their website is a place to find out anymore. Dapnet, D-A-P-N-E-T, I suppose, dot com. Uh, Dapnet, they also have a Facebook page. Uh, Draft Animal Powered Network Field Days is the official title. You look forward to going, Nick? Sure. <laughs> you like teaching? Oh yeah. You're good at it. Yep. Well, I suppose we ought to keep on trucking, huh? Guess so. Zodiac and Elvis are bringing a hitch. Not much of a log pile yet, but hopefully we'll be building on that. It's kind of a long skid. Gonna help Nick stop when he gets up here. Whoa! That'll work. Okay, Nick. We'll swap rolls. I'm pulling the head just a little. You know, you can use this side right here. Yeah, I want to kind of get this, and then I'll, I'll like keep the single logs. Open. Sweepy log and short log. Looks like it. stupid of me. Ease them ahead, Nick, just a little bit and toward the woods. Uh, you want to do it there? Okay. Nick's going to do it from in front. Try not to hit the ground. Whoa. And that didn't work. Oh, well, we'll bring another chainsaw out next hitch, I guess. Jeez, I hate being stupid. I think Pipsqueak could have done better than that, man. Yeah. Where am I pinched? Where am I pinched? Uh, I think I'll go get an axe. I'll BRB.
pinch the saw. I'm gonna chop a little bit here. Of course, you know what happens when you do this. Usually you manage to hit the bar. Are those buttholes leaning backward or forward like they ought to? I can't really tell. Oops. No, they can't Oops. be leaning backward, Nick. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a gap there. So they're standing up in the tug as well. That happens. I used to work with a guy, Nick. You might remember him, Big Tim Chase. I remember him, yeah. Best skitter operator I ever worked with. And I've worked with a lot of them. Big Tim almost never got snagged. Everybody else would run their line down through there and get snagged on a couple stumps or trees or something. Big Tim never did. He knew where to park the tractor and where to run the winch. And how to roll the choker. Of course, usually I hook chokers. <laughs> uh, he also, I can't remember ever seeing him get pinched on the land and cutting up a hitch. You know, usually we'd haul out like four tree lengths at a time. And, uh, you know, most of them have two, three, sometimes four logs and, or more if we're hauling low grade. And uh, Never saw Big Timmy get pinched. And he could file a chain. And he did everything backwards if you watched him, but the damn thing cut. <laughs> and it wasn't just filing the rakers down. Uh, what a guy he was. What a character. I miss him. If Big Tim was here and he knew we had a YouTube channel, he'd get on the camera and say, Hey, Brant, why don't you tell him about the time you were backing a load of oats up to the thrashing machine and your dad was on your ass and you were getting mad and you jumped right up top of the load of oats onto the horse and started hitting him with your fists. I'm ashamed to say that's a true story and I try to forget about it, but Big Timmy wouldn't let me forget about that. He'd love to tell that in front of a bunch of people. We had a piss poor setup for, we had a poor wagon that just wouldn't back up well and those horses had all they wanted. My dad was making a bad situation worse. Getting ugly and being loud. <laughs> and I've had all I could take. Yeah, I mean, big load of oats too. We used to put, I mean, we used to really fill them wagons going up to the thrasher. Guess I'd had enough of everything. Old Rambo Bay looked like Elvis. Even prettier than Elvis, and that's saying something. Uh, I don't know what Rambo had done wrong. I think he kind of slipped. I don't know. I mean, I jumped like pro wrestling, man. Right off the top of that load of oats and landed on Rambo. I don't think he even knew I was there or even cared. Hmm. <laughs> uh, it's wonder that horse and I didn't kill each other. And he was a good horse, too, actually. He just, uh, we were having a bad day. Hopefully I've outgrown that stuff, Nick. Yeah. I know I wouldn't jump like that, no. Oh boy, look how long we're skidding them. Look at the top end. Hopefully, uh, ooh, you don't be like some of these buyers and hook your scale stick right there and cheat me out of scale when you know damn well that's right in the sap wood, not gonna hurt anything, but. We got a good buyer on this job, I'll tell you. We got old Chad. He wouldn't do that. This might be the last hitch, just small log pile as that is. We got a, we got a help. We got a help chop, chop some hay this afternoon. Cows need to eat, Nick. People yeah. need milk. Guess if you don't like the sound of choppers running next to your house.
Try putting water on your cereal. Yeah. That's what Gary Schwab used to say. He'd say, uh, if you don't like the smell of cow shit, put water on your cereal. That's what he'd say to people who bitched about it. <laughs> we'll hopefully get some good footage of the uh, Caravan for Cancer ride. Plan on pulling Elvis and Andy there tomorrow. The heavyweights, actually it's all one class. And uh, we plan on taking Zodiac and Ziggy through the wagon train tomorrow. So it should be a lot of fun and a good event. Hopefully we raise a lot of money for cancer research. Wagon ride tomorrow, so usually leave these jockey yokes on the cart. sure they're with us for tomorrow. I think I'll take the lines right off because these are our horse pole lines. That's what Elvis and Andy will wear tomorrow. And the other team will wear something different. Baby Elvis. I also think I'll take the spreaders off. So I'll have them for, with us tomorrow for the wagon ride. Because I probably won't use Elvis's harness tomorrow. Elvis isn't going on the wagon ride. I think it's a good time to try the new horse, the young horse. Back. Back. What kind of trouble do you think he'd get in, Nick? The new one? No, Elvis, if I left him here without a bridle on. Oh, he's tired. I don't think he'd really do much. <laughs> yeah, probably. He'd probably go find some grass. <laughs> quick release knot did not quickly release. There it is. I had it secured. I'll get that stuff. Okay. Zodiac doesn't look at me like that. Normally we have a little more room in the front of the trailer. But not today because we got the center gate all the way forward. Uh, because tomorrow we'll be hauling four horses and we need it further forward. Baby. And also, normally, if there is any normal, I'd be giving these horses a little drink of water right now. And I'd have hay bags in the trailer for them. But, we're not going home. We're going to Brian Armisen's. We're going to keep the horses there this afternoon. We're going to work for his neighbor and, uh, and his nephew, the Owens farm, Chris Armisen and Brett Owens. We're going to help them do some chopping this afternoon. So, uh, um, so anyway, we're only a couple miles from Brian's. We're not going to give them, we'll give them water and hay when they get there.
I like to run the extra hame strap on top, particularly on this wide collar to just fits the top of his neck a little better. It's also a safety thing if uh, something was to break. And I just have an extra hame strap with me. I was talking with some folks from the DAPnet event yesterday, and we were talking about how you can uh, fix just about any broken harness part with hame straps. So if I have them right on top, I have some extras. Will Zodi. Will Zodi. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, Nick, if we put Zodiac's harness in first. And we'll put Elvis's on top because we're not going to take that tomorrow. So this is how I unharness a horse. I undo the tail crouper. Of course, I run a tail crouper usually. A lot of folks don't. Uh, you can see there's no sores under the tail or anything. They're made to fit well. Take the bridge in. I put it right up over the top of the tail crouper, right up on the spider. Come out over here, Nick. And of course, you got your belly band. I love these old belly bands. And then lastly, I unhitch the hames. And I like the mechanical binders. I just don't have any on here. Now the harness is ready to come apart. Off. So I unseat it from the collar. I grab the hame with my left hand. And I run my arm right through this britching and hip strap. I can put that right on my shoulder, but I don't usually. I grab the other hand with the right hand, and he's a naked horse. Well, he's not quite naked. The old collar off. This is an old collar. Just because it's stamped DM on top doesn't mean I stole that from Donnie Meadow. <laughs> I bought it from Donnie Meadow. Oh. I was looking at pictures yesterday and some of them were dated. Probably in 1995. <laughs> To fit old Rambo. Talked about him a couple times today. Fozzie had a different collar that finally wore out. And this was old even when I bought it, but it's a heavy collar, too. I don't know what's different about this. And I don't just mean heavy build or a big draft. I mean, it weighs a lot for a whatever it measures. I don't know if that's a sign of quality or not. They always say that about home appliances. Used to be you got a couple buddies over and you knew you were in for a project when you had to move a refrigerator or a washing machine. Nowadays, they're so light, they're no problem. I also think the older ones lasted better. I don't know if that's the case with collars or not. Most new stuff are not built to last I'd so say. that you can go back and get more and keep the company going disposable yeah yeah cars too you know what nick everybody says that about cars i don't remember cars in the 70s and 80s going 250 300 000 miles like they do now yeah, that's true Hames out of here. Again, grab it by the hip strap, britching in my case, both. Fat boy's on the 
What do you call it? The, the belly band. Kick his foot a little. There you go. I think he does it on purpose and then pretends it's an accident. Well, I'll have a comfortable afternoon off. Somebody was advertising on, I don't know, pulling horses for sale and pulling equipment for sale on Facebook. Uh, sorry I'm distracted, I just saw something here. Uh, somebody was advertising they wanted a, you know, like a 30 inch full collar. And I think they meant full Sweeney. This is actually a full collar. It's not cut away like a half Sweeney or, or really cut away like a full Sweeney. Most people don't know the benefits of a full collar. This is why I was distracted. I saw my... Saw one on the ground and I picked it up. Good job, Nick. Let's just put all four of them right on the hook. Elvis is an absolute muscle head, but he still has a relatively slim neck and a full collar fits him well, particularly for working. Oh. I think every mule I've ever seen in my life, even the really big, really drafty ones, I don't think I've ever seen a mule that needs a half Sweeney. I think mules go with full time. And traditionally, any mule you saw in old pictures had full collars. Now most people run half swings. Maybe I should shut up. I'm not a mule man. I don't know much about them. And I don't hear of a lot of sore necks or anything like that. So why should I second guess what they do? An awful lot of percher on need a full collar as opposed to a full or a half Sweeney. I, I, I just think they're underused. You used to see a lot of them, now you don't. A lot of horse pullers. That's your answer to anything. Put a full Sweeney collar on it. Well, I think you might better fit the length of it better and the draft better. I like to travel my horses backwards when I can. But I just always have. I read an article once years ago that said they're more comfortable this way. I tend to think they probably are. It's a guy out in Shipshawana. You got Harness Bob and the trailer guy there. Jim Riggen, Hagendorf or whatever, German name. He used to sell a lot of trailers at Shipshe, Indiana. And he would actually put a brake light inside his trailer so the horses could see that brake light. And when they saw the brakes come on, they'd actually brace themselves. I bet that's a good idea. Well, we're going to close the door on the horses. We're going to close the door on this episode. folks uh, as many as we can tomorrow at the caravan for cancer and then again in a couple weeks at the uh, Dapna field days thanks a lot everybody <laughs>